Hello everyone, this is Melanie Ecke and you're watching MajorFilmEvents.com. Today we are in West Hollywood celebrating Valentine's Day like only Lifetime TV can do. This is the anti-heroes, anti-Valentine's Day bash celebrating the premieres of both Mary Kills People and Unreal. Stay tuned. So Unreal, season three, congratulations. We just wrapped four, so we got two seasons coming up. Yeah. Wow, we, we've been waiting for you guys. I know, it's like a year and a half or two years, someone like, we better get this stuff cooked. Let's start shooting this before we lose our audience. But no, you know, we, I, I, you know, we like to keep people in suspense or in, in you know, in boredom, in prison, waiting for the show. But though it's been a long time, it's been a long time. No, you do very well with that. So just tell us a little bit about without telling us too much where we're going. Season three, every year has had its own little dynamics. So you're not going to get the same kind of show. And this year we have a sutras, very powerful, very beautiful, very a woman who's looking for love and hasn't found the right person, and she's a career woman, and so she, and she's a great actress played by Caitlin Fitzgerald, and, and a bunch of guys. And it's more than just guys with their shirts off. I mean, these guys, there's that. So you girls will be happy, and some guys. Um, but there's a lot about relationships and stuff that's really political about what's going on in the world, and it's going to be really... It's intense, and it's going to be really, really, I think it's uh, a great, great season. And then uh, season four, there's challenges between the sexes, between men and women, which I think's innately going to bring an audience, like men and women going after each other and certain things, and then it's really fantastic. We, we just finished wrapping that season, so. And how messy do you get in season three? Well, Graham can never be messy. I mean, Graham's always got to be, you know, he's got, you know, he's got to. <laughs> um, Graham is more messy on the inside. Uh, his soul and heart has been beaten and broken. He's the loneliest man in Everlasting, let me tell you. He's an absolute mess. So he's, he's messy on the inside. And you'll get to see that too. So, yeah. We are all very excited. Where can we learn more about you and what you have going on? Um, the, the two seasons of, uh, of um, Unreal. And I have um, a movie series I'm doing um, with uh, Lacey Chabert from Mean Girls. And, and uh, so I can't tell any more than that. But it's a bunch of movies, kind of a mystery movie series. And I got a couple of other feature things and some stuff I'm working on. I'm very, very busy and I'm lucky to be busy. But, but I'm here to support, you know, a show that I'm very proud of, proud to be part of. And we are very proud of the show for you. Trust me, I'm in love with Unreal. Oh, thank Definitely. you very much. I'm glad you love it. Of course. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Congratulations. And happy Valentine's Day tomorrow to you. Oh, happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> so first I want to say happy anti-Valentine's Day. Happy anti-Valentine's Day to you. And since we're speaking of anti-Valentine's, I think that Unreal is the perfect show to celebrate anti-love. So let's talk about season three. What, what kind of trouble do we get ourselves into? My oh, well. I, I, on a show like this, I think it's, you save time if you say, are there moments where you're not in trouble? Was there, were, That's a good point. The, the thing I love about my character is it's, there's the added addition of nobody ever knows where I'm coming from and nobody ever knows where I'm going to. And I don't know that he does either. So I just want to know from your perspective, what do you think makes this show so addicting? But it is essentially about a sick family. And everybody in the family... I think kind of digs each other and recognizes each other and has something. Every, I mean, we all, everybody's in a Mexican standoff since the end of season two. We're all, we're all like this. Uh, and I think there's genuinely love there. And this, the funny thing about this show is we sell, we sell anti valence We sell bogus love. We sell what greeting card companies sell. These guys don't even get there. They're so busy building the bogus love machine that they, there's no time to really connect with anybody. And there's real love there. There's real potential there. But they, you know, there end, they're end up being these, you know, uh, every, if something doesn't work, there's an agenda and it's usually against somebody, you'd rather just hold forever and say, no more agendas, you know, uh, but that's not their business. Thank you for that insight. I really appreciate that. And happy Valentine's Day. Thank you for speaking with us. Congratulations, season three of Unreal. How does it feel? Well, I'm just so excited it's coming out because I've been waiting for months. You know, I, I feel like it's the best season. Uh, well, it certainly was. But I, I, I don't know. Overall, I loved what what the issues were. I loved uh, that they had a woman being the bachelorette. And the whole kind of 
you know, how we look at people, because now that the men are the, are the ones vying for the attention of her, our assumptions about what's appropriate and inappropriate change quite a bit. And then my character, of course, embodies what the Me Too movement's all about. I'm, I'm, I am like the, the post- The Me I was going to say that. Horrible boss who's sexually harassing you, who's using his power to try to get you to do things for him. It's, 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 you know, he's a monster. Well, well, at least you can admit that. And every character takes a roller coaster in each season. Can you tell us a little bit about the roller coaster that you're going to go on? Well, um, I'll say this. This year, Gary has it out for uh, Constance. Uh, and he, um, and it's interesting to me because in a way, he's undermining his sort of best asset in his network. And I think it has to do so much with his insecurity as a male and his kind of kind of unconscious misogyny and his desire, if a woman's not, you know, sort of ha ha in a sub subservient sexual relationship with him, he's like, you know, he's, he, you know, he comes down on him. And I, it's, it's interesting because she's a, you know, she's producing for him. She's doing a great job, and he's me and he messes it up. You know, so um, but we'll see what happens. I won't tell you who wins, like you don't know. But you definitely gave us something to look forward to. I'm excited. He's amazing to work with, and we had a lot of fun. Have a good night. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I appreciate so, it. Tell us a little bit about your character's development in season three. What what can we see from? So Madison is. Still a pretty new producer. Season two, she was kind of taking on this job, but she still had people sort of telling her what to do and how to do it. And this season, they're just like, nope, you're on your own, girl. Like, you got to do it yourself. So she's going to have to figure out how she herself can do that without the year's worth of knowledge that the other producers have. So, well, it seems like people on Unreal just kind of step up to the plate, right? I mean, Madison ha finds a way to step up to the plate, so to say. So, speaking about the premise of Unreal and this mirroring, in a way, reality TV, do you have any interaction with reality TV? And do you feel as though Unreal is a realistic representation? I've never seen an episode of The Bachelor. But the one thing that I really thought about before even being on Unreal is they handpicked these people to be on the show. It's not a coincidence that they picked these two people who hated each other in college, you know? Like, they know all of this stuff, and there's a reason they're there. So it's definitely, you know, it has to be manipulated in a certain way. But I think after doing Unreal, I'm like, wow, there's a lot more that can be manipulated than I really thought about. <laughs> a lot of webs being untangled. Thank you so much for that. And lastly, do we have anything else that we should look forward to seeing you soon soon? So I got to do, in between filming season four, actually, in between filming season four, I had a couple of days off and I got to go do an episode of X-Files, which was super fun. Nice. Exciting. A big nerd. So that's coming out in March, I believe it's episode eight of the new season, and it was very different than Madison and very fun. I love it. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Congratulations on everything. Thank you so much. Would you like to shout out your social media? Uh, Instagram and Twitter, it's Genevieve B-U-E, because my full name didn't fit. <laughs> Thank you. And I wanted to tell you that I noticed you when you stepped foot on the carpet, you just brought life to the carpet as you... I had, a, I had a beautiful welcome wagon awaiting my arrival. She said, happy anti-Valentine's Day. Thank you. Anti-Valentine's for an anti-hero. I'm still wearing my heart on my sleeve, though. I still got some love for all y'all. <laughs> I love it. Let's talk anti-heroes. Let's talk about the trouble you get yourself into in season three. Jay truly does become an anti-hero this season. I feel like he's been the moral compass for the past two years, and this time he has had enough. He sees bad behavior all around him being, being rewarded left, right, and center, and he thinks... If I'm going to get ahead, if I'm going to be a badass baller and build my empire, i got to play dirty just like these girls are. So he goes, he goes, he goes dark, and it's fun. Sorry. I, I don't know. Like, I don't know if I like that or if I'm scared. You know, even on his worst days, he's still like the best of the bunch, let's be honest. <laughs> I, I, if I must admit, I'm going to have to say so. <laughs> question, why do you think the audience loves Unreal so much? Um, I, I can only say why I love Unreal so much. It peels back the veils of illusion. It shows how the sausage is made, and it's just like, it's so interesting. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Especially, especially this season, we show how the sausage is made. It's one big delicious sausage party. Um, I think it's I think it's really fun and interesting to see how your how your favorite reality shows are constructed together, and you know how they end up as like this you know p uh, pretty package at the end of the day on your television screen. It's like not at all you, what you would think goes into it. So you feel as though this is real. I think that there's definite, there's elements of reality into what goes on behind the scenes of Everlasting, for sure. I love it, I love it. Social media. Uh, Jeffrey B. Chapman on Instagram and Twitter. Congratulations. Thank you, nice to see you. So you look amazing on the eve of the day of love. Yeah, well, you know, you got to be ready for a date on Valentine's Day or Galentine's Day. Right. Um, do you have big plans for Valentine's Day? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm going... There's a there's a special lady named Ilsa. She's she's an older woman, older than me. And I'm shooting a documentary about her, and I'm gonna go. She has some of the most incredible stories, and I'm gonna be her Valentine for a little bit. Yeah. I love that. Absolutely love that. So let's talk Unreal season three. Congratulations, first off. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure. So everyone clearly has a habit of getting themselves in trouble in every single season. Are you going to be able to stay out of trouble for season three? Uh, I, I mean, you're going to have to see. You're going to have to watch to see. He definitely tries to keep himself out of trouble. Yeah, but would, you say, would you say that your character develops throughout this season? Yeah, oh yeah. No, because it's like, it's all, it's the recompense from, the, from season two. He, he realizes and has to deal with what happened, like whether it be internally or externally. He's figuring it out. You know? And lastly, are you on social media? Let us know where we can find you. Uh, just joking, JK, on Instagram and Twitter. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Congratulations. Go have fun. Yeah, thank you. You too. Thank you. Thank you. First, I want to say that you look absolutely lovely on the eve of the day of love. Thank you. Thank you. Let's talk about the roller coaster that your character is going to be expected to take this season. Well, you know, Fiona starts off, um, she just kind of makes an appearance, and it seems like it's going to be maybe happenstance. I run into Constance's character, um, and, and I run into Quinn in a bar. And it's just, we're old friends. We came up through like the CAA ranks together as assistants. Uh, and then I just kind of stick around. And then I start to have more of a role and more of an influence on Quinn. And as Quinn is trying to figure out where she fits and what she really wants to do and, and the boss lady she wants to be and how can I help her be that boss lady and how can we all help each other, but then how do we all still get what we need? And it becomes really this ruthless like back and forth, you know, what's gonna happen, who's gonna be on top? And it's really, it's really exciting. It was really fun. Well, needless to say, you get your hands a little, a little dirty. Yeah, I'm willing to, but we don't know. We can't tell which side Fiona's on, whose team she's playing for, which is kind of exciting. Okay, we'll stay tuned. Are you on social media? I am. I'm just at Tracy Tom, C R A C I E T H O M S on everything. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you. So I am so excited to be speaking with you, the creator of Unreal. And Unreal is such a highly talked about show. Why do you think it's just so addictive? Um, I hope it's because people love Quinn and Rachel. I mean, that was sort of when I pitched the show, it was a, it was a drama about two women at work. And I think one thing that I felt really passionate about was that in my life, my work relationships have been really a huge part of my life, but nobody really talks about them. Um, so I hope that it's very exciting for women to see like friendship portrayed on camera and also ambition and hard work. And it is really exciting and it does really work. Let's talk about season three. Yes. yes. What can we expect? Lots of hot dudes. There's so many hot dudes and a lot of fun. A lot of fun. We definitely like wanted to have a blast this season um, while sort of digging into all the themes that we really care about. So um, Rachel goes way deeper into her backstory. You find out a lot about her. Serena is going through hell with all the guys. The guys are fighting with each other. Like it's a very fun, it's a very fun time. It sounds like unreal. I have one last question though that I have to ask you. How, 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 how accurate of a portrayal of reality TV would you say unreal is? I would say Unreal is very accurate. Um, it's 100% fiction because I'm a writer, so I made everything up, but the world is very accurate. And all of my sort of old co-workers are the ones that I'm still in touch with have all sort of said, like, it feels, the world feels true. Trust me, I think you got it just right. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Thank you so much. We had such an amazing time tonight celebrating anti-heroes and anti-Valentine's Day with the cast of both Unreal and Mary Kills People. And we invite you to watch both of those shows on Lifetime TV.
TV very soon as they celebrate their premieres. Once again, my name is Melanie Eke. You're watching MajorFilmEvents.com, and you never know where we'll be next.